Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of 20 Minutes on Fighting Disinformation from Media City Bergen. My name is Christopher Hammer. In this talk, we will hear from um, Duk Chen Tang Nguyen, um, who will be giving us a broad overview of uh, the new threats of image and video manipulation and generation, how researchers seek to uh, advance methods to reveal them. The talk will cover how researchers collaborate with industrial partners to counter disinformation. Briefly about, uh, about Jen, he's an associate professor at the Department of uh, Information Science and Media Studies at the University of Bergen. His main area of expertise is on multimedia forensics, live logging, multimedia retrieval, and computer vision. He's a member of Media Futures Work Package 3, the Media Content Analysis and Production in Journalism, and the Nordic Observatory uh, for Digital Media and Information Disorder, Nordis. And he's mainly working on the visual content verification. So uh, with that, I'm uh, very pleased to invite you attend to, uh, to take the microphone, take the screen, and uh, take us through your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christopher, and good morning, everyone. So today I'm talking about image and verification in the age of disinformation. Let me try to share the screen now. Okay, so when I'm thinking about the age of disinformation, the first thing coming to my mind is about the advance of machine learning, in particular deep learning in generating uh, synthetic uh, images or video. So here you can see an evolution of synthetic human faces from 2014 until last year. As you can see here, uh, not only about the resolution, I mean the size of the image has been increased significantly back then from eight years ago, but also about the, real, the, the realistic quality of the human face also really improved. So uh, it's almost impossible for normal human can recognize if this uh, female is really a real person or is generated by using some deep learning model. And it's not even getting better, but also it's getting easier than ever. So even people without any, uh, let's say, skill in machine learning or background in machine learning, they still can generate, uh, let's say, different human faces that never exist. For example, you can go to the, this website, this version does not exist, and you can generate it completely very real, realistic characters. And Further than that, if you go to another website they call generate.photos, they allow you to generate human faces, but you can choose different uh, properties. For example, you can choose uh, the age of the character, you can choose uh, gender, you can choose the emotion, skin tone, hair color, hair length, and a lot of other things, as you can see as a result. And it doesn't require any skill from machine learning or even there's no, no need to understand the techni technical behind. You just have other self uh, services online. And it's not only human faces. Machine learning now can also uh, allow you to generate different objects, landscape, background, and so can animate some static images already. And not only about, let's say, synthetic content, but also we have a lot of advanced in terms of photo editing. For example, uh, here in the top row, we see an example of uh, an application named Lumina Neo, where they try to change the background of an input photos. So I would say back then, uh, in order to do this thing, you should be somehow skillful using some photo editing software, for example, Adobe Photoshop, but nowadays just by using an app and then you can do it, everyone can do it. In the bottom row here, you see a new result from a scientific uh, study that allow them to remove some object or even insert a new one that still reserves some condition about lighting or shadow. The last example I want to bring here is about the very new uh, AI services by the OpenAI named DALI version two. So here they can generate images using human languages. As you can see here, 
you just choose like an astronaut riding a horse in the photo realistic slide. You have the result here, and then everything can be generated by your human language. It can also try to, let's say, insert objects. Again, here, let's say you want to insert a flamingo in this position and still reserve the, the reflection, the shadow, which is something very important for us. Uh, people working on forensics to, to base on the check content. So now with the new machine learning, they're able to insert new objects that still reserve a lot of different, very hard conditions. Or they can try to generate different variations of the same thing from an input. For example, you have a drawing here, and then apply and Dali person two. You can have different variations of this pendant. It's really stunning and reserved. So, how are we uh, dealing with this new technology in this age? Uh, from the researchers point uh, uh, from the researcher side uh, the only way for us to do it is to collaborate with different partners so we have collaborating and uh, we are doing we are in collaboration with uh, journalists fact checkers media studies media houses and many other partners to, to handle the situation uh, here's the a kind of a collection or a list of different uh, this information monitoring and counter group around the world, as you can see here, let's say in Norway, we have factors in other countries, we have a lot of things here. So in this list, we have around 619 groups uh, in this term. In particular in Norway, right now in my group, so we are working on the Media Futures Research Center. In my work because mainly we're trying to, to work on the media content analysis and, 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 and production is really related to, uh, to fight against disinformation. And also we have another project which is collaborating with different Nordic countries and then it's the Nordic Observatory for digital media and this, this and information disorder. So that's what I am working right now on. Now I go to, to the main point of uh, the talk today. So image and verification, how do we do that? I'm trying to summarize uh, on the methods that we are applying into three different, let's say, points. So the first one is we based on the observation that uh, when someone modify a photo, it's almost always based on the real one. So in order to figure out if something is wrong or not, we try, first we try to, looking for the original content. And normally we are using some reverse image or video search, for example, like Google, Bing, or T9 to look for the original version. And then uh, still to modify images that still reserve a lot of things, let's say uh, it's not that simple. So still to try to look for or be searching for some inconsistencies among and images, for example, in lighting, shadow, and reflection, then we can figure out if there's something wrong there. And of course, we can check the metadata. The second thing is, the second point is, we try to magnify something we cannot see easily by our eye. For example, we can zoom in the photos, and we can apply some forensic techniques to magnify and analyze the pattern, the noises from the camera, the shadows, the differences in the colors, and then we can see the differences. Lastly, uh, we can try to understand the drawbacks of some methods, and based on that, uh, we can figure out if it has been uh, or if it had left some traces. So I I will not able to provide everything in detail. I just try to show some examples, giving our uh, demo and prototype uh, in in this three type of um, verification. So here you can see a very standard example that you simply to check the metadata of an images. Let's say we have these images, you upload it to the service is making by the demo from, from the Nordisk project. And then you can see a lot of information from an exit header of an images. For example, you will see the camera type, you can see the original resolution, you can see so many other information. Especially in this case, you can see something like software from Adobe Photoshop. So is it a hint that this photo has been modified because it's not coming directly from a camera, but it's coming from Adobe Photoshop. So just an example. 
Another example is we are trying to analyze some technique. It's quite uh, <coughs> uh, famous. The name is error level analysis. In this case, we try to analyze some JBEG quality, so the, the quality of the compression. And as you can see here, this image has been modified, and we can see uh, this area has different pattern than the rest of the images, which is a hint that something's wrong is here. Comparing to the original image, you can see here, we don't see anything abnormal here. So you can see two cases here based on error level analysis. Again, we are using this tool to analyze this. Uh, here are another example. So we have uh, a YouTube video uh, showing an eagle trying to catch a kid in this video. And then uh, our students, they try to extract some branches and try to check the consistencies of the shadow. So here on the left-hand side, you see this object and this uh, version. Shadow and the version is very consistent. So it's, it's, it's checking the consistency, uh, it's consistent. On the other hand, when we try to check also together with the eagles, we see that uh, there's something not really consistent among the light sources. And A is the, the scene is outside, outdoor. So I mean the main shock is only the sun. So we still show that there's something to work here. And in, in particular, if you can further check in this, the ego was not great. About the um, <clears throat> human synthetic, human faces, we can also apply some, let's say, inconsistencies to figure out if something uh, real or generated by the Algorithm. So here you can see on the left hand side, this is the real human faces. So the settings are very somehow consistent. But here you can see with the computer generated, they left something here. And also the detail of the pupils of the eyes normally is not as good as in the real <clears throat> person. Uh, for example, you can see here. So this lady. Uh, has it moving among the long video, but the tip is still aligned the same way, so it's impossible in, in the real. So. And the last example about this is about when we try to magnify subtle changes, for example, like the color of the skin, we can review some biometric information. One of them is the heart rate. And it's quite often that in normal on the real human video, we have uh, biometric information somehow by magnifying the pattern, we can review that. But with the computer generated characters, it doesn't have it. So for example, this here are the result that we get from uh, computer graphics, synthetic uh, videos, and then it's completely have no heart rate. Same here, you can see that we have some pattern that only human have it. On the other hand, we can analyze the noises from the camera. So based on this, we can review like uh, if you are filming the characters or you are taking photo using the cameras, there are noises from the sensor of the camera. Why on the other hand, most of the case when we generate uh, synthetic images, the noises are not really the same like the one from the camera. So by analyzing the noises, we can distinguish between synthetic content and real one. The other thing we are working right now is about social multimedia verification. So here we just show a summar, uh, summary of what happened when you upload an image through social media platforms. So as you can see here, when you upload an image to Facebook, let's say, they will rename your photo, they will resize your photo, they will different compression of your photo. So you are losing a lot of information. But on the other hand, they leave some traces. So by investigating what happened to an image before and after you upload to a social media platform, we can try to review uh, the provenance of uh, an image. And also we are trying to apply a combined uh, multimedia forensics with uh, language processing, machine learning, try to analyze, uh, in this case, Twitter information, uh, based on Twitter. So here uh, we just make a new demo based on our research center media features, uh, we call it Twitch searches. And then we try to, to make a web application that we extract the query from the grid and then we run Google News search. And then we try to see relevant information based on 
and the twist you're looking for. So now the demo is tailor-made to the Ukraine. And then you just, if you go through this website, and then the first thing is you will have very reason twist about the Ukraine. And then when you click on, let's say, search this tweet, you will have uh, relevant information that you can see which are the related texts you can find through Google News on the left-hand side, how relevant it is. And if the tweet contains some images, we apply reverse images and provide uh, related information also. So it's really helpful for uh, people who want to investigate some more about some tweets. A few more things before I finish. So we are trying, at one hand, we try to improve our, let's say, performance of the uh, forensics methods. So we try to develop a lot of new tools and we try to make it probably better and better. But on the other hand, we have learned through our user NIST analysis and also from our interviews. Uh, we know that we need much more than just only a better tool, but we need a user-friendly, responsible, and collaborative tool and services. So we are trying to make also to bring kind of visual literacy into our tools. So we try to make uh, somehow the tools will have much better and more friendly user experience and try to, to give explanation, try to give more, let's say, like a tutorial and challenges in, into our tools. So that's what actually we are working right now on making our new tools. And also we try to uh, provide different repositories through different projects. So you can see very, very soon our repository on the fact-checking technique, user needs. And then here's just an example about uh, the repository of the visual content verification. So here on the left-hand side, you can see the list of use, useful or helpful tools we found and we try to index all of them. On the right hand side is you will see a literature map of the methodology we collected. So this thing can be accessed through the Media Futures uh, project. Very last thing. So you see here on the left hand side is the winning, the award winning photo in <clears throat> uh, photographic competition back in 2019. And here in this photo, you see there is a mother with some disorder problem protecting her children. So the photo is really touching. Actually, uh, this is the behind the scene. So somehow I would say the technique is, still, you know, like where's the boundary? You keep wondering how do we handle this situation? So that's it. Thank you. And if you need any questions, please feel free to contact me for further discussion. I'm really happy to, to have discussion with any, anyone. And thank you again, Christopher, for uh, inviting me to give a talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chen. That is uh, fascinating. It's uh, uh, amazing how far you got to um, to verify images and, and videos. Um, but it, it does show how complicated this matter is. And, and uh, it's uh, fantastic that you and, and your team is working intensively on this. And we will no doubt be tuning in to, to you again as, uh, as your progress in, in media futures uh, and in all these uh, projects uh, on, on this subject. We will uh, next week um, uh, have a speaker from the BBC that will uh, talk about uh, an initiative in the UK uh, to cooperate uh, between media organizations to verify news. More details on that uh, to follow shortly. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we at uh, Media City Bergen wish you all to keep safe and stay healthy. Thank you.